Good morning, Kitchissippi. This is a video version of the 87th Kitchissippi newsletter, which will be coming out tomorrow on March the 26th. Listen, if you're not subscribed to the Kitchissippi newsletter, I strongly encourage everyone to do so. The issues and items that I'll be talking about uh, this morning have further links and details available on the website, and you'll be able to find all those in the once a week newsletter that I put out. Subscribe today if you can at kitchissippiward.ca. It is a very busy time at City Hall, so we'll jump right in. Uh, in the newsletter this week, uh, Committee of Adjustment hearings. Uh, I know that residents follow those fairly closely. The Committee of Adjustment will be meeting on April the 5th. There are several Kitchissippi properties that will be on the table for that hearing. First, in Hintonburg at 94 Penny, uh, the owner is seeking to subdivide the property into two. Those will be further subdivided uh, after construction of two semi-detached uh, buildings, uh, each of which will be a long uh, front-to-back three-story semi for a total of four units. They need some variances associated with the side yards uh, as well as the front porch and rear yard, so that will be heard. At 382 Richmond, that's uh, one of the uh, businesses along Richmond in Westboro. The owner uh, is uh, is a realty company. They're seeking to put their office down onto the ground floor. There are zoning bylaws that ordinarily prevent offices from being too close to the main street, right on the main street. They're seeking some variances that would allow them to uh, put their office on the ground floor uh, and uh, and make that a street front. And at 141. One Carlton, the owner is seeking to demolish the existing uh, dwelling, subdivide, and build a two and a half story semi. They need some variances related, of course, to the reduced lot width and uh, minimum area. So, those are the three that will be heard on April the 5th. We do now have the preliminary decisions coming out of the uh, March the 15th hearing at uh, 244 Atlantis. The request for variances to allow a semi to replace the existing house uh, were approved, uh, as was uh, a second story addition at 564 Mansfield. We've uh, confirmed as well that the 181 Richmond application associated with a patio uh, right across from the Superstore uh, has been adjourned until the April the 19th hearing. There are a number of discussions taking place among the various different stakeholders to see where and how that should proceed. This morning I'm on Workman Avenue uh, just over uh, uh, by the parkway here. Uh, Workman is going to be one of the streets that is impacted by the Stage 2 LRT detours. Uh, important to note there is a large public open house on the Stage 2 LRT detours as they run uh, the buses down Scott, uh, down a new extension that will run past me here to go from the corner of Churchill and Richmond to the parkway. So April the 4th, we're hosting an open house uh, that will be held at the Tom Brown Arena. The doors open, I think, around 6 o'clock. We are going to try to uh, live stream that one on Facebook. So tune in for the presentation and then question and answer period. Uh, that should start around 7 o'clock or so. For more details, uh, see the newsletter or the blog at kitchissippiward.ca. On May the 7th, uh, we're going to have another hazardous waste depot here in the uh, in the ward. That'll be held again at Tunney's Pasture. Interesting uh, couple of stats on that. Uh, we received a memo along with the notification of when the household depot will be. In 2016, uh, across the city, all the city depots, 17,962 participants dropped off 646 tons of hazardous waste at those household depots. That was an 8% increase over 2015 in the number of participants, a 16% increase in the uh, uh, the weight of the, of the material being dropped off. That's great participation. It is really important that you keep household waste like old paint, electronics, chemicals of various sorts out of our landfill. The hazardous waste depot on May 7th is an excellent opportunity to drop those off. In the past couple of years, we made some tweaks to the layout in order to um, uh, minimize the impact on the Northwestern residents. Uh, to the best of my understanding, that new layout, which is working fairly well, will be maintained. 
another interesting event on March the 28th, the Healthy Transportation Co uh, Coalition and some community partners, including I think City uh, for All Women Initiative, are hosting a uh, event, Road User Fees as the Key to Sustainability. Uh, my colleague, David Chernyshenko, who chairs the Environment Committee, will be one of the speakers on that. I intend uh, to uh, attend as well. There are more details on uh, that symposium uh, in the newsletter. A uh, big week at planning committee. I, I spoke a fair bit about it in the last newsletter, uh, but just to reiterate, the 1960 Scott uh, development that's at the corner of McRae and uh, Scott Street, a 22-story, 22-story uh, uh, tower proposal for some rental uh, housing uh, with uh, commercial at grade will be moving ahead. Uh, I've made no secret of my adamant opposition to that. The secondary plan calls for that to be four to six stories, and this is just too big a jump. Uh, you can see my full comments as they were submitted to staff uh, on the uh, blog by following the links in the newsletter. Also on the March 28th planning committee, there is the uh, redevelopment of the Westgate Shopping Center. I am supportive of this one. I've posted my comments that went into staff on the blog. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity for the kind of intensification that we should be pursuing, which has uh, minimal impact on uh, existing low-rise neighborhoods. Uh, so I am supportive there. I would expect that that will pass at planning committee. And uh, also the um, oh the rezoning to approve uh, the operation of the Byron Farmers Market, or sorry, of the Farmers Market in Byron Linear Park uh, will be proceeding as well. Uh, you can see my comments again. I've copied and pasted those onto a blog post. Follow the links to find out why I am supportive of that particular zoning change. Listen, huge congratulations to the Hintenburg Community Association. A couple of weeks ago, I received a, a giant stack of petitions. They have successfully petitioned all the streets in the neighborhood to get a 40 kilometer per hour speed limit. Um, huge amount of work. I'm really glad for Hintenburg. Uh, we'll see the uh, signage going up uh, within the, the, the near future. Um, but uh, you know what? It was too much work to ask them to do to accomplish that change, which is going to make a big uh, difference in the quality quality of life, I hope, for uh, for those residents. Um, the uh, commu community association estimates that it put around 1,700 hours worth of work into getting those petitions done. That's far too much to ask a volunteer organization to do. New legislation is working its way through Queen's Park. We are looking at the city at our process for uh, setting default speed limits. Uh, that work can't get done soon enough, uh, so stay tuned for that. There is a, a full description with some of my thoughts on the blog as well. On March the 29th, I'm kind of excited about this, uh, my next pop-up hours will be held from 4 until 7. We're doing the pop-up um, uh, that day in the pod, which is in Somerset Square Park. Uh, that's at the corner of uh, Spadina and Wellington West in Hintonburg. You may have seen the pod there. It is a, um, a maker space. It has a 3D printer. There's a virtual reality station, podcasting booth. The building itself is intended to serve as a model for potential coach houses. Uh, pop on in. Uh, that will go out of the park at the end of the month. So if you haven't been in yet, this might be your last opportunity. I've linked in the newsletter to a great story that was in the Kitchissippi Times talking more about what that pod is. Uh, I've also put a link in the newsletter to the next round of uh, Civics Boot Camp that will be held by Synapsity. Uh, they used to be known as the Citizens Academy. Um, the, uh, they do great work in terms of, of get, uh, helping individuals get the tools they need in order to engage with uh, municipal government particularly. Uh, I hope that if you have an interest in, in engaging more with, uh, with City Hall that you'll consider signing up for that boot camp. Uh, there is no cost. The uh, full details are in the newsletter. Hey, the Hintonburg Street Hockey Tournament is coming up. That's going to be held on April the 22nd. I've linked in the newsletter to the, um, uh, the I think it's an Eventbrite page, where you can sign up a team. All the proceeds from that tournament are going to go to the Parkdale Food Center. Uh, also, a link uh, I've been asked along with David Hicks, who's uh, one of our uh, one of our residents. He's my partner in I Bike I Buy, which is uh, continuing to expand. We continue to be active on uh, on that file. Um, we've been asked to speak to the Yao Insights Business Summit. Uh, that's going to be held on May the fifth. Uh, I hope folks will follow the link in order to sign up for that uh, Yao Insights Business Summit. 
City Hall, it's going to be a very busy week this week. Uh, besides that uh, extremely uh, packed uh, planning committee agenda, I'm going to be trying to attend the community and protective services meeting that will also be held next week. My colleague, Catherine McKenney, is bringing a report to that committee uh, for information purposes, but people are encouraged to sign up and speak to it with respect to sanctuary cities. There's been a lot of discussion around sanctuary cities in the media. I think some of it has often and been inaccurate, um, uh, certainly in the comments that we see posted to the, uh, the news items that are going out there. A sanctuary city is essentially a don't ask, don't tell policy with respect to the services that anyone in Ottawa is able to um, avail themselves of. So signing up for a library card, taking advantage of some of the uh, limited primary health care services that the city funds, signing your kids up for, uh, for swim class. There is um, uh, a body of literature literature that indicates that those who may have precarious uh, immigration status overstayed a, a temporary um, uh, visa, uh, temporary foreign workers, uh, people whose cases are before the Immigration Review Board are sometimes um, hesitant to avail themselves of these services to which they are entitled. Uh, it is not, however, a motion that would give anybody free access to services like social housing. In order to get a social housing unit, we have to ask whether or not you are legally in the country and uh, certainly you cannot take advantage of social housing if you are not in the country uh, on, a, on a legal immigration basis. Same with things like uh, uh, Ontario Works, uh, various different social programs. So there is a report. I would encourage everyone to read it. I've put the link to the uh, to the committee agenda in the blog. I'm hoping to attend that meeting in order to speak to Sanctuary City. If and when that comes to a vote at City Council, I am supportive of it. Uh, also, uh, this week, um, a lot of meetings, the usual grind. I'm going to be doing some uh, more meetings on market governance. I want to nudge our staff a little bit. Uh, we've um, uh, kind of gotten bogged down on closing a portion of Pontiac. You can see the link uh, in the newsletter if you don't know about that proposal. Uh, it's uh, There are some drainage concerns. But we we want to see if we can work through those to implement a closure there sooner rather than later. Um, also, I'll be talking with staff um, about the renovation of La Roche Park probably in 2018. Hopefully putting in a SENS rink, a new field house, renovating the field. Uh, lots to discuss there. Lots of momentum. I'm hoping after that meeting to uh, be able to provide enough update to the Mechanicsville Community Association. Uh, various development meetings, various construction project meetings. Uh, it is going to be capped off at the end of the week uh, by uh, my attendance at the Junos. I am very much looking forward to that. There's also a really interesting panel, link in the newsletter, to uh, Building Ottawa as a Music City. I hope uh, if you have an interest in uh, Ottawa's music industry that you will be able to attend that. Um, I understand the, uh, or I know the mayor is uh, coming to that as well. I have a sneaking feeling we might hear some good news on the music front uh, over the course of that panel, so I hope folks attend. Um, if, uh, if you uh, have not seen yet, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see that now you can click on the closed captioning. Uh, YouTube does make it possible to generate captions for this video. If um, you have uh, 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 hearing uh, challenges, uh, click on the uh, closed captions to see uh, those. And I've also generated uh, a translation uh, for this into French. So if you uh, do want to use closed captions by clicking below, you can get French translation and uh, English uh, captioning to this video. Uh, Kitchissippi, I hope you have a great week. It is a winter wonderland today. I'm certain it's all going to melt soon. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for tuning in.